You feel lucky? You feel lucky today? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> After the way the weekend started. So here's a question for you guys. This is my blackberry bush in my chicken coop, if I call it, and it's still fully leafed out. So I'm thinking there could be hope yet that this thing is still going to give me some fruit this year. So welcome back guys, uh, Saturday morning here in the woods. Anybody that missed out yesterday's video on Friday, uh, we had to actually put all the gear in the cargo sled. Happy Friday! <laughs> 100 pounds of gear probably and haul that in the road, uh, about three quarters of a mile in because the road wasn't plowed and I wasn't taking the chance of getting stuck. And I come in to go down and get the water for the bathroom out of the brook and I kind of happened to fall in the brook. So it was kind of great. My boot liners here got dried out pretty decent overnight by the wood stove. So uh, in case you miss that, you might want to check out the video actually from yesterday because that was kind of interesting down there. It was a, a great way to finish off a Friday, I'll tell you, right into my up to my knees in the water down there. But anyways, uh, we're going to have a fun day around here today. Birds are just starting to come out around a little bit. The squirrel was the first guy out here this morning. Actually, you know what? I haven't really seen any birds. Um, and it is 8.30 in the morning on Saturday, but there is rain coming today, so it's kind of stormy weather going to be upon us a little later. Uh, it was a really warm night in here last night. It's 5 degrees outside right now this morning. It was 28 in here overnight, and they get up in the middle of the night, and it's still 25 in here right now. So uh, we're definitely not cold here this weekend, a little different than the previous weekends we've been out here. And the snow is finally starting to melt a little bit outside, but there's still, you know, well over a couple feet of ground cover. But anyway, hang around if you want for the day, and we're going to do a few things around here. And I'm going to show you a couple things around here. As I said in my last video, I might show you the uh, generator, how I kind of have that hooked in. Even take you upstairs, maybe show you my solar bank and all that, my battery bank and my uh, inverters and my uh, MPPT charge controller, all the goodies I get up there. So anyways, hang around for a bit, and uh, we're just going to get underway for the day, and we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, it is time to remove my screen door. One of my viewers had mentioned that these things will turn black if you leave these out in the weather. And I have to agree with her. You can see this one is starting to blacken up actually now. And also, it's starting to separate a bit at the bottom. 
Actually, I'm not going to take it out of the door. I'm going to take it right off the hinge. Take the other screw out. But you can see down here, there's actually a gap in it now. I'm going to have to clamp it and glue it to bring it back together. The way they put everything together, they didn't use enough glue on it, I guess. That'd be kind of nice not to have that sound hammering away every time you open the door going in and out of here. And not something you really need in the middle of January or February, so not a lot of mosquitoes around. Anyway, you take her off. Because the old skeeters will be back soon enough. Should be going back on. All right, last one. Birds sound nice today. Somebody driving by it there from the sound of it. All right, easy as that. Done deal. There. There we go. All right, you ready? All right. So anyways, I'm going to pack this all down. So it's a little easier to get down and get my uh, water in the future. Because it's pretty tricky going through here. Because there's all kinds of friggin' snow. And snowmobiles going by right now. This will work though. Pack her down nice. Pack her down, all right. <laughs> there we go. Pack her down. And Brooks almost wide open again rare for this time of year. Yeah, it's going on the edge of it again, eh? Hmm. Not real smart. Packing a path. Need some poles. Make it a lot easier. Those ski pole things everybody uses. But anyway, that makes it so much better already. What a difference. There. And dig some of this out, I guess. Move a little snow. This unit. Right over here, haven't really talked about much yet. It's kind of cool because this was actually the focal point of this property at one point. Because back in the day, when I first bought this land, I had a truck camper. One of the ones you put on the back of your truck. And I basically built myself a little room on the back, eight by eight room, fully insulated it. Uh, then we actually, uh, I had LED lighting and everything in it, fully insulated, and I had a wood stove in it, which is actually the same barrel stove that's in my garage out there now. And I spent my first Christmas in it. My first New Year's. And had some good evenings in this thing. Now, originally, I had built a wood stove which is out back under the steps right now. And I had it wood fired. The problem with the wood firing was it would take three or four hours to get it hot. But then when she'd get hot, you couldn't control it. It was hard to shut it down. So basically what I've done is I took my hot water heater, my on-demand propane one, and I hooked that and I hang it on the post here. 
run the PEX lines. I have PEX, everything's frozen. This is all PEX tubing. Hook that onto the hot water heater. And probably within an hour and a half, I can get this thing hot. Nice thing is, when it's hot, you can turn it off and you have full control because if you want, you get in it and it starts to cool off a bit, you can turn it right back on and add more heat instantly. When it was wood fired, it was really hard to control. So anyways, I will probably be doing a video one of these days, maybe April, once this thing thaws out enough that we can use it. And it's gonna be a hot tub night, which would be lovely. Doesn't have any jets in it, but it's a double soaker tub is what it is. It's two feet deep, six feet long, and seats two people opposing, one from the left and one from the right. Well, it's quite a unit. 100 gallons, that's what it holds. And I'm so lucky that this insulation didn't get broken and actually end up down in it with all this weight of the snow on it. So, there's one of my wash and toss games. <laughs> Everything buried. But again, this is quite a unit. It's uh, pretty relaxing after a hard day's work to be able to actually go for a soak in this thing at 105 degrees and enjoy the evening. Watch the planes fly over. What a pile of snow. And the hard thing is, hard to believe, we've already lost a lot. This has already melted and settled a lot. Right, Darcy? Oh yeah, lots of snow, Darcy. And Darcy Beagle says. And you guys have yet to meet the rest of my family, either Fred and Lulu. You wait till those two get over here for a visit. That's my two kitties, because they travel quite a bit with me also. So, I don't like to bring them on the road. Is this bad and all that? You never know. You might have to walk, and it's kind of hard to carry all the gear in a cat carrier with two cats. So. But anyways, Fred and Lou will be making their debut soon enough here. So anyways, guys, uh, this is my dog house, I would call it, with my generator in it. I haven't finished it up yet. Needs some metal roof on it. Needs some shingles on it. Probably going to do that in a project here fairly soon. Anyways, you can see externally, uh, the actual gas tank, it's kind of neat here the way I put a, a external tank here so there's no fuel in there on the generator itself. So there's no real risk of any kind of fire or anything inside because there's no gas in there other than what's in the carburetor. And it's nice to at a quick glance, you can actually see the fuel level right here. You can tell exactly how much gas is in this bad boy. And this thing will probably run, oh, six five or six hours easy on a tank of fuel, uh, 3,500 watts, a little yard works one actually, but it's nice because it's actually got a little Mitsubishi engine on it and not a Chinese one either, an actual Japanese Mitsubishi, which is really nice. So I was lucky to have that in there and I'll show you inside how I operate this thing internally without even having to come out here to start so it. What I did in here, as you can see, this is by my back door. Uh, I've got this hatch door here, which I ever need to open it up, it'll grate up and I've got a thing here I can hook it on if I need to do any kind of access check the oil level or whatever if I have to do any kind of maintenance I can just take a panel off the outside there to start it on off switch here it's literally just simply a, just a, a simple uh, light switch choke cable right here goes remote out to that <laughs> this is actually my pull start handle right here and all I got to do is give this thing a couple good yanks when she's cold let it run a second actually sorry switch on uh, a couple pulls let it run till it warms up a bit and then just slowly take it in put her in let her go again it'll run probably five or six hours if I want it's not even that noisy like to insulate the box a little better, some sound deadening insulation, because I've only got standard insulation in it right now, but if I put some sound deadening in, will help it quiet it down a whole lot better. And uh, again, after I'm done running it, all I do, flip that switch off, done deal, turn it off and just let it sit until I'm ready to use it again. So I don't use it that often around here. Only really need it if I'm gonna run some power tools and I can even normally do that on my inverter and all that upstairs because I've got a 1500 watt inverter which will run my miter saw, run my skill saw, run my table saw uh, if I need to run any of those but just for short periods of time. I wouldn't want to do it for long uh, to run the battery bank down pretty quick if you start taking the kind of load off it. So, you know, if I'm doing any amount of work at all, fire up the generator and let it run for a couple hours. So this is upstairs. 
this is my uh, little electrical system the way I did it. Now I know you guys, some of you electrician guys are going to laugh quite hard at uh, some of these clips, clipped on clips and that. It's all working the way it is and I'm not going to change it for now. What I want to do eventually is make a couple of what they call bus bars and I can just clip things on. I don't need to wire anything positively. Uh, it's just for silly things, uh, some little accessories and that I've got running off it here. Anyways, these are six volt batteries, four of them, uh, series parallel. 12 volt system I'm running. I have a thousand watt inverter here. It's just a China one. I'm not even sure the name of it. It's a backup e-power. And I've got this Motormaster Eliminator one up here. This is the one that I actually have wired in and I actually use and it's on right now actually because I'm charging on my laptop. The way this one works is nice. This wire is a remote that goes right down to the bedroom. So I don't even have to come up here to turn the power on to make it live. Uh, what I do is basically there's a switch in the bedroom. I can just turn that switch on. So the way I run this whole place, and this works kind of different, but I'm going to say without a big transfer switch, when my inverter's on, this power bar is powered up over here. Let me get over here just a bit and show you guys. This is my charge controller and everything here. Now, when this is on, if I want to run power off my inverter through my plugs, my receptacles, you can see that's plugs. What I do is put it in there. Now my inverter is running. The whole place is wired with 14.2, just like a house would be. But instead of a transfer switch, which are big money, I simply plug it in. This receptacle down here is actually wired in off my generator. So if I want to run my receptacles off the generator, simple as that. Now it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. It doesn't get a whole lot harder than that. Is it safe? I don't think it's unsafe. Is it up to electrical code? Hell no. But this is a cabin in the woods. Anyways, if I want to run the generator again now, and I've also got power and everything, even run out to my little garage out there, run the miter saw, run whatever, and even off of this, and this is pretty cool, this unit here, all the way out, and all I did was run 14-2 wire underground in a piece of pipe out there, and I'm just running 14-2, and it's a pretty good distance, that little garage out there. I still have 119 volts of AC power in that garage when I tested it, coming off this generator, so i got to say that's decently impressive, uh, to say the least. So anyways, uh, inverter again, we're going to put this into here. That's how the receptacles are running, okay? This is a 20 amp MPPT, they call it, maximum power point tracking. Uh, that's my actual charge controller. It's a 20 amp, those three panels, the max I'll ever see is probably 12 to 15 amps coming out of them on a really good day. And on a poor day, I'll get three or four amps. Um, battery voltage, it's a watt meter right here that tells me the power going from the charge controller to the batteries. And then this is coming from the solar panel to the charge controller. So I can monitor power in, power out, and everything else out of that. Initially, when I set the electrical up in this camp, I had all the lighting done with 110 volt uh, lighting running off of the inverter. So the thing with this is, just hang on just a second here guys, uh, the thing with the inverter over here was that anytime I want to run lights, we'd have to turn that on, even just run a light or two, right? Well, this inverter alone will draw about a half amp an hour statically, just with nothing else coming off it. So. After running this camp like three years like that, I just kind of had a brainstorm here just a couple months ago, converted everything over to 12 volt in all the receptor in all the uh, light sockets. So now everything is 12 volt down there and I'm running it right directly off the battery bank. So, I mean, that is the, the way to do it that I don't have to even run the inverter now for lighting. And the only real AC power we use here, other than a few power tools, is when I watch my little flat screen TV down there with the Roku box. And when I do that, we're only using 30, 40 watts max. So we don't draw a whole lot off this system at all. And uh, normally it's pretty well topped up. So it's a decent little system. It's not for everybody. Works for me. That's all I can say. And then to mention some of the lighting I installed after I went to 12 volt, this little light bar right here. Let me see if we can get this focused a little better. There we go. This light bar right here, that thing draws 7 watts of power. That's all that is. 7 watts. There's another one I put over here. And the nice thing is there's a switch on each one that I can run them individually. But when I turn the light switch on the wall over here, boom, I got light. And it's almost so much light it glares on the camera. And so is this. So it's 7 watts each. Those things are insanely bright. So 14 watts is lighting up my whole kitchen now and 12 volt lighting. So, you know, 
it uh, is definitely a win-win because at night time those between those two lights up there they put off a considerable amount of light so definitely a good investment and a pair of lights i think were like 25 bucks on the good old amazon Well guys, I'm going to take you for a little walk, I'm going to show you down here, I actually fell in the brook, I'm going to go through my little trail, I'm going to show you, sorry to wiggle around here so much, my little snowshoe trail I made, down to the brook we go. You can clearly see, <laughs> and I'm not going too far today to do the same thing. Yeah, you can see this all along here, or right here, as I was kneeling down in this section right here. And luckily it isn't real deep, it's only about a foot deep in the water. And the ice I was kneeling on was probably six inches thick or eight inches thick. So when I went in, I was only on probably six inches of water realistically, so it wasn't too bad. Here's a question for you guys. This is my blackberry bush in my chicken coop, if I call it, and it's still fully leafed out. So I'm thinking there could be hope yet that this thing is still going to give me some fruit this year. Um, I don't know. Chime in on the bottom, see what you guys think. But, you know, this thing has hope yet. I mean, come on. I don't see a lot of blossoms on it. I don't see a lot of fruit, but, well, check it out. Look at the leaves. This thing is just, you know, full of life. Now oh, the other ones are all dead, see? <laughs> See this guy? He's hanging in there for some reason. This should be nice. The better half is going to do herself a nice mix here for a loaf of bread. Nice fresh loaf of bread with our chili here a bit later. So anyways, as you guys can see, all the snow is actually still on the back roof of this camp. And I, uh, apparently, I have a snow rake somewhere. Bought, bought one last year at a yard sale, and I really don't remember where I put it yet. I, it must be home at the house somewhere, not sure. Could use it right now. It's like the better half says, it's kind of nice when you can bring the snow off in your terms, not in nature's terms. But I think in this case, it's going to be nature's terms, and it could be any minute here, so we're not sure. But... Uh, can't say I feel real comfortable standing under the edge of this. But you can see we got the Hawaii 5 thing going on up here. Right there, all kinds of that. Don't need that in the head. Man, I don't like standing here with that. Telling you, this could be a real good screw up a Davy Dum Dum that comes off. I'm standing here. 
it's a lot of ice, a lot of snow. This isn't the shovel for the job either. You feel lucky? You feel lucky today? <laughs> I don't. After the way the weekend started. Can't say I feel lucky. It's kind of strange, just notice this guys, all this bark, all these chips all over the ground, this whole side of the tree. And I don't think that was wind or anything that did it, but it looks like something actually peeled away and pulled all this bark off. Cause I mean, yeah, well, I can't just pull that off. A piece there, but look at it all up there. Strange, eh? Things that make you wonder, things that make you go, hmm. These little fellows are hungry today. They pretty much emptied this feeder since this morning. It's only quarter to two in the afternoon. Well guys, we have down here, we have the base for the chili, we have hamburger, uh, red pepper and onions in there frying away, and then up in the oven here we have some nice rolls in there cooking away, dinner rolls, instead of we biff the loaf of bread idea, we're going with some rolls, something to be different, should be a tasty meal. It does not get any better than that, folks. Fresh dinner rolls right out of the hot box. And you wouldn't believe how good these things smell. Going to be a good dinner. Chili's almost finished also. I'm going to tray them over here with a little three pack in it. Three in there, and we got nine in this. So we got a dozen rolls, which was pretty good. She did a wonderful job. Well, there you go, boys and girls. You check that out. That roll is perfect chili everything is done and ready to go we're going to sit down here and enjoy our supper now and this is going to be really really tasty we'll talk to you guys in a little bit Well, my friends, guys and gals, it's Sunday morning once again in the woods at the cabin. Uh, the day we have to pack her all up and head home. So once again, it's been an amazing weekend here as it always is, even though I kind of, you know, had a couple little mishaps on the way in or one mishap and, you know, a bit of a lug to get everything in here. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the weekend hanging out here with us. Hope you come back for some more weekends. It's so nice to have you guys here. Uh, anyways, we're going to load up the cargo sled, going to drag it back out the road here in a couple of minutes and make our way out to the truck and head out to the real world. So anyways, we will, uh, we'll talk to you soon.
Well guys, now we're back to the truck and it seems to be in one piece, which is a relief because we didn't want to leave this thing in the woods over the weekend like this. We really had no choice. Hope you guys enjoyed the content of the video this weekend. If you did, do me a favor and hit that little subscribe button down there and like it on the bottom too. It always helps me out. Uh, again, if you guys want to come back in the future, we would love to have you guys back here. It's, it's wonderful every time we have you guys hang out with us for the weekend. And uh, once again, if there's nothing else you want to do, just please try to live simply and remain grateful. Thank you so much.